And them three criterion and those three criterion were used in the past. This is nothing new again. I'm not seeing anything new. I'm seeing these applied in the past. It kept me professional standards. Again, the three of those were used to ship to Lost E to begin with. Um, in terms of this area, and you look at the Lost area, if you take the attendances that go towards the Gannon minor injury, if you take the attendances that go towards Lost minor injury, there's more people attend those two facilities, minor injury alone, than attend the Southwest Acute Hospital. But yet this area isn't deemed big enough or have enough service users to maintain acute care. Now, there's more people attending minor injuries in this area, and that's not counting the people who are going to Antrim, going to Causeway, going to Craigavon, going to Southwest from this area. So while we're talking about rationalising services and we're talking about moving services into the big sites, I would like to see the conversation about bringing services back into this area. We have a big, we have a big area down there, Desert Creek College isn't going to be built now. Perfect area for a college, or for a hospital. We actually have the Malotter site. It's heated 24-7, it's open 365 days a year. Doctor on call is now there in the evening, it's not even based on money more we're supposed to be. And again, we don't see no development. So why we have these criterion, it's good to see them on paper again. But again, I'm looking at a six year journey rotating here. <coughs> We're going in circles. Okay. I mean, I think um, when they look at, at the kind of categories of patients who go to emergency departments, it would be very appropriate that people who have minor injuries would go to a minor, minor injury unit and there, not to There's minor streams in there. The there's no minor injury unit. In, Antrim, Antrim area people, they don't have a minor injury unit there. They have Antrim A&E. When they go into Antrim A&E, they get triaged into their minors. Yes. But the issue in Antrim at the moment is that there are too many major patients there. They can't get admitted into the hospital, so the minors has now been used as a major unit. Yes, and I mean, sometimes that's part of the discussion about whether that's, it's good to have a minor injury unit running alongside or whether you need to have something that's, that's kind of separate. Well, you could have a GP one, but the GP one's now been used as a ward in Antrim too, today. No, so just going to pick up your point, it's absolutely right that it can't just be about taking services away all the time, I mean, you have to look at what can be provided and where the right place is to provide it. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a great deal we could do to develop the services around here. The, the second point as well, um, well the second point, sorry, for the development. The, what was your second point you were asking about the, oh, you were saying about the criteria not being new, and, you know, th there's some truth in that too, there's only so many ways we can, we can cut this, I think there's only so many criteria you can use. What we're talking about really is about being serious about applying these and actually looking at how the services are configured and doing this properly this time, starting now right. and seeing it through. If you use these contrarian on, say, the likes of the Matter or Causeway or Antrim at the moment, would they meet it? Their A&Es? I don't think, well, the and &Es, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> as I say, well, the process, the pro to go back down, the process has to be clear to that. Uh, I mean, well, it has to be. Antrim so and, and, and E's staff for 60,000. Antrim and E's only staff for 60,000 people. A brand new A&E, which is built for 90,000 people a year, seen 84,000 84, people during 2016. And it's only staffed for 60,000 people. It's true. And the hospital couldn't cope with 60,000 people, I know. So I if, we, if we apply yeah. these criteria now, and we just say, we're going to be serious, we're going to apply these criteria right across the board, how many services would you have to shut down? It's not about that. The point is about what the, the it, it is. About how, we, how we use the resources. Yeah, they're apply, yeah, they're apply them where you don't apply them. It's not about closing them. It's about, it's about how we deliver these. So, I, you know, I know, but if you either apply the criteria and you either have enough staff on site or you don't. But these, these are decisions that are going to have to be made, but all, all I can say is go back to you again. These are criteria we think are the best way to make these decisions. They will be kind of bad. So the people who are involved in delivering this, who, who make these decisions, come up with the rationale. That's, those are the commitments I can give you. And I think it's the criteria been taken together, the criteria been taken together, because there's others here which are around new models, <coughs> different ways of dealing with patients. We already had people giving some examples to avoid um, attendances or admissions. So if we go to the next one, which is around workforce, and I know people have started to raise issue about workforce, and this is where permanent workforce are required to safely and sustainably deliver the service they're either not available, they cannot be recruited or obtained, or can only be secured with high levels of expensive local or agency staff. And that is a big problem in Northern Ireland. I mean, Alistair, last year, how much was the overall 
local agency budget in Northern Ireland? The agency budget. Maybe? Last year was just under 80 million. Just under 80 million. And that was 